Alright, welcome back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. Today we're going to do a little bit of uh, free CAD modeling on how to model a basic wing, propeller, wind turbine blade based off of an airfoil shape. So I just kind of want to give you guys a rundown of the project I was working on. I was in charge of modeling a basic wind turbine blade that we could do FEA analysis on. And I have a second video after this one on how to actually do the analysis within FreeCAD. But today is just kind of showing the basics of how to set up the blade. Some of the challenges you'll run into, some of the issues, and all that fun stuff. So it's probably going to be about a half hour video. Also I'm at the home studio so you might hear cats meowing, birds chirping, cars honking, you know, all the normal stuff. Anyways, first I want to show you guys some pictures of what I've been working on. Okay, so this is kind of the project that I've been working on. Let's show a top view of the blade. So this is the blade from a 400 watt wind turbine, just a, a cheaply made wind turbine. The project is um, kind of a really big project for our state and for the university, so I won't go into any details of that, but what I was told to do actually not told. What I was asked to do and instructed to do was to cut this blade into sections and then trace each airfoil section so that we could get coordinates or just have the airfoils traced in general in case we needed it. So I'll show you what I mean. Like this, you can see there's section one, two, three, all the way down. And they are labeled on the other side. <clears throat> so this is, I just used bandsaw. Uh, the material is nylon mixed with 30% carbon fiber except I don't know what kind of nylon. I don't know if it's 66 or if it's a different type of nylon. And then what we did was we traced the sections on the graph paper. The cord length from this end of the axis to this end and recorded these three points. And that way if we needed to cat it in a modeling software we could um, we could use each three of these points as accurate data points or at least the cord length. But I'll show you how to do it in FreeCAD and it's pretty similar in all the other CAD software uh, the method I'm going to use and then I used this is a free FEA online website called intact.de and it will do meshless FEA which means you can throw in STLs. This is the STL version of the blade and it will go ahead and do all the analysis, tell you where your stress concentrations are. If you hold shift and click somewhere it'll tell you all the information that's going on. So pretty interesting. I do not show how to use this website. Actually I do. I actually do have a video on how to use this website. So I lied. Anyways I also show how to use FreeCAD's um, FEA, and that's what we'll go over with this blade, but that's the second video. Okay, so I think that is everything we need to do. Yeah, there's a few pictures in here you see where lofting fails. I'll show you all those, those errors. So let's go ahead and open up FreeCAD. And the first thing you want to do is you want to go to Import. And then we're going to go find the picture that we want to use for our airfoil. Now, if you don't have it traced, that's okay. You can also look it up online. Maybe you can find the name of the airfoil. I do know that this one is called the A18 airfoil. And so you can see how it's actually really close to this. It's not exactly perfect, but pretty dang close. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Is that the one I want? I want this one. Now there is a difference between the two. That first one was really too small. So when I imported the image it was just bad. So what you want to do is when you take a picture of the image try to get as close as you can and as straight above the image as you can. Since this one was scanned, I just used Windows Snipping Tool. Okay, so go ahead and open, and it's just gonna lay it down right there. Go ahead and hit Top View. Double click the image, because now we need to make sure we're on the XY plane. 
Uh, you could put it on any other plane, but I'm going to make mine on the XY plane so the blade's standing up. And then we want to hit calibrate. And then we're going to start right here. And you can see how we have our lovely little red cursor. And we're going to go right to this point. And I'm going to type in 28.25 millimeters. Hit enter. And still in the top view. Nothing has moved, so we should be good. Last time I did this, somehow it got skewed into the plane. So it was half above and it was angled. Somehow it became angled. And that really messed things up. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, let's go ahead and move that image there. Okay, so let's move into the part design workbench. We're going to go ahead and create a new body. And you can see that the body's created there. We can go back to tasks, hit create sketch, or you can use create sketch up here at the top. We want the XY base plane, which is the one that we're on. We want to hit OK. Now, hopefully this is not what caused the skew in the last issue. I mean, in the last time I tried to do this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the arc tool and we're going to go to endpoints and rim point. We're going to start here at the top. And then we're going to go to right about here. Don't worry about the uh, report generator. We can always turn that off. So I'm going to go ahead and right about there. Looks pretty good. Now, um, a couple of things that we'll discuss here in just a second. Okay, we're going to draw the next one. And it's about the trailing and leading edges. Okay. So using the same tool, we can make these little arcs right here. Uh, sometimes it does that. I don't know why. Okay. Control Z a couple times. Make sure you get rid of your constraints. Make sure there's no extra things there. So we're going to click here and bring it out and just, I don't know, whatever looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, so here's the thing. You can notice they're uh, coincident constraints. We want to make true tangents. So a couple of issues with FEA analysis. When we make rounded fillets, it creates a lot of tiny faces. So the best thing to do is you want to try and always make tangencies, real true tangents. Now this is just saying the endpoint coincidence is going to be removed and replaced with the actual tangent one. So go ahead and hit OK. Hit OK again. So now you can see we have tangent constraints. This will hopefully reduce the amount of tiny faces that are generated. So if you don't want to deal with meshing issues, since you're only using this for FEA, which is most likely deflection and stresses, you can replace these arcs with just a straight line from here to here so that you have a flat face all along the entire edge it's only going to be like a quarter millimeter thick so it shouldn't it should be negligible when it comes to FEA and that way it prevents a lot of issues with meshing um, but I want to use the arcs for right now because I want to show you some challenges that'll happen when you use besides the meshing issues when you use arcs. So let's go ahead make this last one. Okay, if you want to get this report view away if you go to edit preferences general and report view you can have it only show report view on air which is usually what I have but since it's kind of bugging me, I'm just going to turn it off because I don't want it to keep showing up. Sometimes it's handy to have open on certain things. Okay, go ahead and do your tangencies. Hit OK. Whoops. Hit OK. Okay, now all our constraints are tangents. Right click to get out of the option of whatever current tool you're using. Everything looks good, so we're going to hit a close. Okay. 
I'm going to go back to model. I'm going to go to section 9 graph. I'm going to hit spacebar to turn it off or just hide it, I should say. <clears throat> okay, next is now cloning this. And this is where we can run into issues. So if we go to the draft workbench. Okay, we have our sketch. Okay, um, like I said, we have our sketch, but we're in the draft workbench. Also, now is a good time to save in case something crashes and you lose all your stuff. If we go back into our sketch, we can double check everything is arcs and it's constrained with tangencies. This is important to know. So, if we have our sketch highlighted and we go to modifications and we go to scale, okay, this is where things get a little bit interesting. Now it wants us to pick a point. So, I usually, for this, I'm going to pick right about this center point right here okay scale factor my scale factor is 1.5 and I found that by taking section um, I compared multiple sections so for example if I take section 1 chord length compared to section 2 chord length its scale factor is 1.5 in both X and Y if I took section 8 and 9 it was 1.5 and I took multiple sections just to confirm and the scale factor stayed pretty consistent between 1.4 and 1.5 so I'm just going with 1.5 now make sure create a clone is checked and then in the Y direction it's 1.5 as well you can see how we've gotten this now usually I leave Z because this is a 2D object but apparently <clears throat> there is a situation where if you don't uniformly scale it, it converts all your arcs and tangents into virtual tangents and B splines. Because the scaling function is meant for 3D objects, so it does need all three to be uniform and to make sure that it doesn't do any B spline conversion. But let's pretend we don't know that. I want to show you the air. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. All right, so if we look, you can see you can see that. Okay, great. So, now do I want to do I'm thinking placement along Z. Let's move this 50 millimeters away just so we can look at it. Okay. Uh, no, nah, we don't need to do that right now. Let's go back to top. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hide sketch number one. And it's actually a good idea to label your sketches accordingly. Like this should be renamed to section one. So that way I know what the sketch is about. Okay, so let's, the blue check mark means it needs to be recomputed. So go ahead and hit refresh. This is where things can get in interesting. Let's just do modification draft to sketch. Okay, now we have this sketch. I'm going to hide the clone. If we look at the sketch, wow, what is all this stuff? What is all these green lines? Well, look, everything's been converted to a B spline, and everything is now a coincident. If I were to try to do tangencies now to get rid of these coincidences, I click on this and this. Wrong selection. Tangency to B spline, edge currently unsupported. So, that's bad. We don't want that. So, let's go ahead and delete these two items. We're going to go back to section one. We're still in draft. We're going to do modification. We're going to do scale. Now, um, first, let me show you this. Pick right there. 1.5 tab, 1.5 tab, Z direction must be 1.5. Even though there's no thickness, it's not going to do anything. It's just that's what it needs. Create a clone, hit OK. All right, now granted, inside, if we highlight this clone, we could do the scale here, but the problem is when you do the scale from inside this placement, it scales it from the center, not from an edge that we pick. 
so it can be problematic that way. I don't know if there's an attachment editor for a clone there isn't, but what is transform? Yeah. See when you double click it, it does transform. We don't want that. So, okay. All right, back to business now. If we highlight this section, go to modification, draft a sketch. I'm going to go ahead and hide sketch one and that one. Now if we double click this, the constraints did change, but we are arc still, which is good because now I know it's tedious and it's kind of dumb. Now we can go through and redo all these. You know what? We probably not do the tangents at the beginning. I just thought of that. Um, and just do them at the end. So, so you don't have to do them twice. Okay. So now that sketch, we can close it and everything's good. Okay. So now, let's see. If I take sketch one, I'm going to rename this to since this is the actual, this would be section two that we made. Because we have section one, which is right there, section two. Now what we're going to do is modification, and we're going to do scale. Let's turn off section one. Back to tasks. We're going to do the same thing over again. Actually, we want section one on and I'll show you why. We want to make sure that when we scale 1.5 tab, 1.5 tab, 1.5 and hit OK that it is scaling from this point, which it is. Okay, modification, draft a sketch. Now you're thinking, you're probably thinking, why don't we just do a lot of clones and then highlight all the clones and do draft a sketch? You can do that but it flattens all the sketches <clears throat> excuse me to one sketch with all of them on there and so it doesn't work for example um, if we had three of these clones with all three different sketches and I highlight those clones and I do draft a sketch it's going to take all of those sketches or those clones and put them into one sketch so you can't separate them Okay, so sketch number two. This will be section three. Now it's time to go through and redo the tangencies. Okay, I went ahead and redid those tangencies, so let's turn these sections back on. Okay, so I'm going to call this one section three. Okay, now is the time to make the loft. All right, so now, okay, how do I want to do this? Okay, if you click on section one, you can see this position underneath placement, X, Y, and Z. Make sure you are not dealing with the axis. I tried that on accident and it just did not work. All right, so X, Y, and Z. We're gonna be messing with the Z plane, or Z direction, I should say. So section one needs to stay zero, zero, zero. However, section two, let's bump this up to, I don't know, 300 millimeters. And let's bump section three up to 600 millimeters. And now if we move, we can see how they're spaced. Okay. Also, let's set section three to an angle of 15 degrees. You can change this while it's been lofted. But I like messing with it right now. And let's change this one to um, 7 degrees. And we'll just leave this one at 0. Ooh, we could actually even put section 1. Let's go with... Um, Uh-oh. hate when I do that. Let's go with negative 2 so that it's let's even go more negative 10 yeah so we get some good I don't know the lofting might fail on this but it might not okay so highlight section one 
<clears throat> move to the part design workbench. Section one is still highlighted. You can either do it from tasks, which is additive loft, or by clicking it up here. And then it's gonna say all of this. So go ahead and hit add section, and then it goes purple. Go ahead and click this, and then hit add section. Go ahead and click that, and then hit OK. It'll go ahead and do its thing. And if we look top down, you can see the angle of twist. If we look to the right side, you can see the angle of twist. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's all there is to basic lofting. Now you can do your FEM analysis and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to show you some errors that could happen with lofting and whatnot. In fact, let's look. Okay, if we look closely, now that we use true tangents here, see how it's one nice face? If you don't change those tangencies, this is going to end up being a lot of faces, which makes it very difficult to mesh with the uh, meshing generator in F and I'll show you what I mean by that. If we go to FEM, either using NetGen or GMesh, I'm going to save my work because I'm going to try it out. If I do NetGen, this might fail. It might crash my software, but let's see what happens. Oh, yep, it's going to crash. You can see it says not responding at the top. So I need to refine the mesh, but I talk about doing that in another video. So, give me a minute. I'm going to pause the video. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, it, it crashed. It didn't like it. So, most likely, it's, it's trying to mesh this little these curves, which can be tough. So, you've got to refine your mesh. And I talked about that in another video, which I keep mentioning. So, i discuss that later on. That's why it's better sometimes to have these just as flat surfaces. But, anyways. Okay. So now, let's look at some errors that could happen during lofting. Okay, I went ahead and opened up a previous save of when I was first making the wind turbine blade. And you can see how it's following that general pattern of, of my blade. You know, so I went ahead and I have not added the angle of twist yet. Because um, there's a few tricks that I needed to do. And I'm going to show you those. These, these are the errors that you can run into. Okay, so let's go back to part design. And we're going to do section one. Is that the one that I have highlighted? Yes, it is. Okay. And we're going to do additive loft. And then we're going to hit add section, section five, add section. This one. Notice I don't have section two, three, and four in here. You can, if it's uniform and pretty consistent shape all the way through, you can skip certain ones. But I'm going to show you one of the errors that happens here. Notice that when we added this section, this one a little wavy instead of staying straight. That That's not what we want. And then another error that's going to happen. So if we go here, <clears throat> notice it went wavy even more. And if we do one more section, watch what happens here. Everything goes haywire. So we're going to hit cancel. So I'm going to go to section 5 and I'm going to hide that one. And then go back to section one, and we're going to try this again. And we're going to go add section. We're going to skip five and go straight to here. Add section, go to here. Add section, go to here. And we're going to end there and hit OK. So now we have pretty uniform shape. Um, OK. This one I did not fix the tangencies. They're all B splines. And this is before I knew about the air, but see what I'm talking about with all these weird little faces that go on right here? That is what I'm talking about. That's why it's better if you're doing FEA analysis to make those lines. But if you're doing computational fluid dynamics <clears throat> using the open foam workbench on FreeCAD or ANSYS or any other commercialized software, you're going to want these airfoil edges in here because that's what... CFD does is test the airfoil. Okay, so now how do we complete this? Well, we want to take this last section right here, copy and paste it, and use it as a beginning part. 
So we need to go in the additive loft, find section 12, control copy. Now yours might bring up a dialog box. All you have to do is hit the checkbox that shows auto select everything. Make sure that's not selected. Unselect everything else and just leave section 12 or the sketch highlighted and hit OK. Mine's not doing that for some reason. On other ones it will. Then out here, control copy, I mean control paste and it's section 16 so we could rename this to something else to be um, to go with our nomenclature and, and organization alright so let's go ahead and do an out of a loft and it's going to throw an error and I'll show you why so we're going to select section 16 and we're going to hit this oh and it says cannot use selected object selected object must belong to the active body okay so what that's saying is if we minimize it looks like all these things belong to the body because of this arrow, but it doesn't. So if you <clears throat> compress it, and then select everything, and then drag it, and the reason why I compress it is so you can see what's outside of the body. Now it should be all inside the body. So now it should work. Select it, additive loft, perfect. Add section, it goes purple. Click this one, yep, hit add section, and click this one. Give it a second. And then you hit OK. And there you have it. There is our blade. So now if I go into this last additive loft and I start at section 7, placement, I don't know. I'm going to put this at uh, 0.5 degrees. Section 8 is going to be at two degrees, section 12, 3.7, and then section 16 will be at 3.7 to match, section 13, I don't know, I'm going to throw it at 10, and then section 15, I'm going to throw it at 15 degrees. Okay, <clears throat> now if we go to the right side view, you can see our angle of twist for that blade. And if we look down the top, you can see the angle of twist. So, that is how that turbine blade is made. And then all we'd have to do is just add section back here for the uh, hub connection, which isn't too bad. It's just basically editing, what is that, section 15? It's literally grabbing this and lifting it up. I don't know if that's going to cause an issue. Yeah, it's making it a little bit thicker like that and then copying this sketch, pasting it and moving it back and then just lofting it so you have a thicker end. Anyway, I mean, not too bad. Then we can uh, do FEA on it, which is the next video. Okay, I think that covers everything that I have learned. Now, I've just barely started using FreeCAD and 3D modeling for about a week and a half. So there's probably better ways to do this. But at the moment, I don't know them. So if you know them and there's a better way, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. And say, hey, look, you idiot. There's a better way of doing this. And... Uh, Here's how, and hopefully I'll remember saying that you can call me an idiot, so then I don't get upset at the comment, but anyway, okay, basic rundown on how to create a lofted wing using airfoils. I hope this helps. It helped me, so thank you for watching, and good luck modeling guys, and happy engineering.